yes they are yeah so good evening so first of all thanks for organizing this great session and the topic which i will be dwelling upon in the next few minutes is about pattern recognition lot of times in infective retinal involvement or infective uveitis there is a characteristic pattern and if you get into the habit of discerning or identifying this pattern there are a lot of entities which can be diagnosed based on your clinical acumen and clinical examination in itself you will obviously need the help of some laboratory investigations but developing a habit of a good pattern recognition will help you in identifying a lot of these disorders which will also help in approaching these in a more focused way you can get your investigations done in a more strategic more organized manner and you can treat them also so before we go on to some common patterns let me just show you or dwell upon how do you differentiate between a retinitis lesion and a choroiditis lesion in the last two speakers cases we saw some cases of choroiditis and retinitis but how can we on the basis of a clinical examination differentiate between these two entities so retinitis lesions usually are more superficial and they will be obscuring the blood vessel compared to that a choroiditis lesion is usually a deeper lesion and you will be able to appreciate the blood vessels coursing over that lesion so a deeper lesion with vessels coursing over it is usually choroiditis whereas retinitis lesions tend to be more superficial they end up obscuring the vessels so another example if you see this lesion over here this is superficial lesion and the underlying vessels over here are obscured compared to that you see the lesion over here and what you see is a deeper lesion and you can identify the blood vessels moving or tracing over this lesion so that's a deeper choroidal lesion over here now this is a clinical pearl which i found to be very useful and this is courtesy dr avinash who taught this to us how can you differentiate between a retinitis choroiditis and a scleritis on the basis of ffa and the clue is two things number one the intensity of early hypofluorescence and number two the pattern of early hyperfluorescence so i'll come to the example but the intensity of a early hypofluorescence is the most in retinitis followed by choroiditis and then scleritis and the pattern of early hyperfluorescence is perilesional in retinitis whereas it is intralesional in choroiditis so i'll just show you an example of what i was saying over here so if you look over here the early hypo is the maximum in a retinitis lesion as compared to a choroiditis or a scleritis lesion and similarly the pattern of early hyperfluorescence is perilesional in a retinitis lesion it's intralesional in choroiditis whereas you see multiple pinpoint leakages in a scleritis and these clues can help you in differentiating between these three entities so moving on to few common infections so number one is toxoplasmosis now toxoplasma is one of the most common causes of a unifocal retinitis so a retinitis adjacent to a healed scar think of toxoplasma if you see a dense vitreitis and some underlying yellowish lesion two of your most common differential should be either a toxoplasmosis or an acute retinal necrosis and remember they heal with pigmentation and scarring so you see a scar and you see a lesion adjacent to it it makes a diagnosis pretty simple we are dealing with a toxoplasma so like i said it can happen in both immunocompetent as well as immunocompromised individuals there is often a frequent involvement of macula it's a unifocal retinitis lesion and it can have an associated severe inflammatory response in vitreous so another lesion you see a scar and you see an adjacent retinitis lesion adjacent to it again a diagnosis becomes pretty similar and simple enough on just clinical grounds we are dealing with a toxoplasmosis lesion over here now one clue to remember is the pattern of reactivation reactivation if it's occurring from the center you may be dealing with a tuberculosis whereas if the reactivation occurs from the edge of a scar then that is toxoplasma so remember toxoplasma lesions get reactivated mostly from the edge of a scar as compared to tb which may get reactivated from the center of a scar another common pattern to be recognized is that of a cm retinitis you may see areas of retinitis with associated hemorrhages some areas of central clearing you may see arterial sheathing and again patches of retinitis and when you see this pattern think of cm retinitis as what you are dealing with so a lot of times in these cases you may not see a significant ac or a vitreous reaction and the reason is that your patient might be immunocompromised so that they may not be able to launch an immune response these lesions often start in periphery and progress centrifugally you may end up having a wedge shaped lesion 
like i said there will be a mild vitritis or often not even a significant vitritis at all because you have got an immunocompromised patient over here and you will have associated hemorrhages in these cases so cm retinitis can present with some characteristic patterns and let us see some of them number one there will be an absence or very minimal vitritis you see a fulminant form where you see these multiple hemorrhages and these extensive areas of retinitis and remember the loss of vision in these cases is often because of a macular involvement compared to that you may see a granular or indolent form where you do not see that extensive hemorrhages but you see these areas of retinitis and in most cases subsequently you may end up sometimes seeing a retinal detachment due to multiple breaks which occur in these areas where they heal with the necrosis you may also see a perivascular form of what we call a frosted branch angiitis where you see this extensive angiitis or the involvement around the vessels but remember frosted branch angiitis can also be seen in bechet's disease sarcoidosis sometimes in lymphomas leukemias and sle and it is also sometimes idiopathic rarely you can see a mixed form where you may see involvement of frosted branch angiitis as well as the extensive form over here now dr alok will be discussing about ocular syphilis in his talk so i will not dwell upon it in much but syphilis also can be recognized by its common pattern so if you see this multiple miliary lesions and this ground glass retinitis with a central clearing think of ocular syphilis this pattern is pretty characteristic of ocular syphilis over here so again you see this patient with multiple miliary lesions this was a patient of ocular syphilis and if you do an oct through them you will see this full thickness lesions this was what we had published earlier also the presence of this full thickness retinal involvement or this retinitis lesions is characteristically seen in ocular syphilis so i'll come to four patterns of syphilis these miliary lesions over here miliary lesions with the central clearing and this ground glass retinitis again a patient with miliary lesions and a placoid chororetinitis so when you see these patterns think of ocular syphilis acute retinal necrosis like dr natasha had already said in her case presentation you may see dense vitritis and then you may see these wedge like extensions or tongue like lesions over here in the periphery once you see this pattern you may be dealing with an acute retinal necrosis so arn can happen in immunocompetent individuals you may have a moderate to even a severe nts segment reaction they are located in the peripheral retina you may end up having a circumferential spread and this rapidly progress if you don't treat them in time this is another patient of arn where you see this extensive peripheral retinitis lesions with areas of occlusive vascular involvement over here when you see a patient with this broken mud sort of an appearance and you see these extensive areas of retinitis with some perivascular sparing in a patient who is immunocompromised think of progressive outer retinal necrosis so immunocompromised individual minimal acr vitreous inflammation involving the macula with a rapid progression and this broken mud appearance think of porn i will just move on to two more quick entities candida and aspergillus endophthalmitis now endogenous endof which can happen in some of these cases what you will see in oct which can be pretty characteristic is this lesion which has broken through this area over here and you see what has been described as a rain cloud sign you see this vitritis and you see this lesion which is evolving over here compared to that in endogenous end of which is secondary to aspergillus you may see a widespread lesion which is more diffuse so let me show you an example of this so this was a patient who had these two elevated lesions and this retinitis involvement and ocd also showed us the same characteristic features which i described in the previous image so this was a patient who had a candida endophthalmitis so this is what you see over here you see a retinitis lesion and involvement of the retinal layers so this is a patient who had a candida endophthalmitis over here and you see this characteristic rain cloud pattern sort of an appearance on an oct aspergillus endophthalmitis like i said has got a more diffuse involvement i will not dwell much upon tuberculous retinitis because i believe that will be discussed later on but you may see a perivascular or subvascular scarring and that again becomes characteristic of a tb involvement so based on these patterns which we have seen let me just show you two simple cases so this was a case of a 29 year old lady who presented with a decreased vision since 20 days she had been initially diagnosed as cm retinitis but when we saw this patient note that there is hardly any hemorrhages which you will usually see in a cmv involvement 
and you see this extensive area of retinitis now this was actually if you look at the pattern no hemorrhages retinal area of involvement of retinitis this was actually a case of toxoplasmosis and when we treated the patient with bactrim ds and clindamycin the lesion simply regressed and the patient's visual acuity also improved so this was a patient of toxoplasma and the last case for the day again if you see this lesion over here you see an area of retinitis over here in the periphery but when you examine the patient more carefully clinically you also see an area of a scar adjacent to it so if you remember i told you that an activation of a retinitis lesion adjacent to the scar is indicative of toxo in most cases and this was not a case of an arn but this was a case of a toxo atypical toxoplasma this patient was subsequently treated with bactrim ds and the lesions completely regressed so the point over here is that lot of times in these infections or this retinal infections if you get into the habit of recognizing the patterns you will be able to arrive at your diagnosis in most cases by just a good meticulous clinical evaluation thank you